All right, welcome back. Now we are ready to create our Angular application. So um, if you want to create an Angular application, it's very easy for you to make use of the Angular CLI. So in this video, I'll be using the Angular CLI. Um, for you to install the Angular CLI, first of all, you need to install Node.js. So if you haven't installed Node.js, the first thing you want to do is to head over to Node.js.com and then you can install it uh, with few clicks. It's really easy. So Node.js comes with a package manager called NPM. Now with NPM, you can use that to install Angular. So here I am on my uh, command, my terminal window and um, to install angular i can simply do npm install and you want to do dash g so that you can use it globally from any part of your uh, computer system and then you do um, at angular slash cli all right this is the command that you would use to install angular but i'm not going to do that because i already have angular um, installed so after you've installed angular you want to check by doing ng dash dash version and you see i already have the angular cli installed and the version i'm using for this uh, video is 12 point is angular 12 i think that's the latest version um as the time of making this video and um the version of node i have is node 14 but we are not working with node we're just working with angular all right so i have angular 12 installed the next thing um, you would like to install to follow along with the video is the firebase cli so the firebase cli allows you to log into the firebase um, console from your terminal like we do on the web page you can do that um, from your terminal and to install that um, if you go to the I'm just going to drop this real quick if you go to the firebase google.com docs you will see um, how you can install the firebase tools so npm install you can do it globally and firebase tools now that's how you can install um, the firebase tools so I already have that installed um, I'm just going to show you using the firebase command dash dash version and oh it's telling me to update I have version 9.6 firebase tool is um, is version 9.14 right now um, so you know what you can just um, install it using that command there so I have the firebase tool um, installed and yeah that's it if you install that we can get started with the application all right so I'm just going to make a directory here I'm going to call it my demo all right and then I'm going to cd into my demo and inside here I can um, create the angular application so the command for creating the application is ng new and then you give it the name so we're going to call it play as app and then this will bootstrap our angular application for us we'll be using routing so I'll hit yes and we'll be using CSS and it's going to take some time to install all the packages and then we will be ready with our angular application as for the editor for this video i'm using v visual studio code i think this is the best um, editor for web development but you can follow along with other editor of your choice that you prefer there's um atom there's um uh, visual studio different editor that you like now our application is finished um, installed all the packages so we're going to move into our application let me just check so you see we have the players app there I'm going to change directory to the players app and now we are in the players app so to open this on visual studio code I really like this I can just do code and dot and it's going to open it for me on Visual Studio Code. Right, so we have our application open here on Visual Studio Code. This is how a new Angular application looks like. You have source folder, app component, and all of that good stuff. 
All right, so um, to start this application, I'm just going to open another terminal inside Visual Studio Code right here. And then I want to serve, do ng serve. And you can do dash dash open so that it opens it up for you in a browser. My default browser is Google Chrome, so it's going to open that up for me on Chrome. And let me choose minimize this window so that I can drag it the other window here when it's done. Okay, so this is what you get when you start a new Angular application. So running on localhost port 4200 and then this is the default template of our Angular application. Nice. Um, so I'm just going to bring this down a little bit and open a new terminal window here because now the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to connect our Firebase application to our Angular application. All right, and to do that, we need to log in to our Firebase application using the Firebase tool. So I'm going to do Firebase login. And it shows I'm already logged in with my other account. So I'm going to log out so I can log in with the account I want to use for this video. So Firebase log out. Okay, I'm logged out. And now I can do Firebase login again. Go ahead, okay and it's going to take me to my browser here and i can select what account i want to log in with so i'm going to choose the other account and i'm going to click allow and my login is successful so as you can see here i'm logged in with firebase so i'm logged in with firebase um, to my application now the next thing um, we want to do is we want to connect the application on Firebase to our application now that we are logged in. And we can do that using a library called Angular Fire. That's the next thing we have to install to our project. And the way we can install Angular Fire, if I just go quickly to my browser, Angular Fire and i go to their official github page i'm going to show you that come on there should be somewhere for installation yes you simply install it by using ng add at angular fire so we'll be using that so now i'm going to do ng add at angular dash fire so hit enter and it's going to install angular fire 6.5 i want to proceed now it's installing all the packages then it's going to bring a list of all the application i have Okay, I have some issues doing that and it says I should try it again. So I'm just going to do that again. Maybe you might not have issues when you do it on your machine if you're using the latest version. Now it's uh, showing the list of projects that I have on my Firebase, which is this player app. And that's the one we want to connect to. So I'm going to hit enter. And there you have it. We are connected to our players a hub. So I'm just going to maybe close this terminal for now and go to our application app.model right here. And we want to bring in Angular Fire here. So to bring in Angular Fire, I'm going to type Angular Fire Model and 
dot initialize app right here but this dot initialize app takes in some parameter and that would be all those properties that we have when creating the application so let me go back to our application players app i think this is the one yes and we created this configuration the last time and we want to copy all these properties here the api key url and all of that we'll copy it and now let's head over to the environment here this is where we add all the environment variables for application so i'm going to create a new one here called firebase and paste all those properties that we have here so i'm going to save that and head over back to the app.modules.ts file and here we want to bring in that environment uh, variable that we just created so from environment dot firebase all right that's the one we need okay so we are connected to our app dot model okay let me just quickly close this up and now we want to create our model for our database and let me just quickly check um, in our database in our real-time database what do we have we have players age country first name last name and position right so let's create a model for this I'll be using an interface for that so let me bring back my terminal bring back my terminal let's take it up a little bit I still have it running here and I have another terminal here just make it bigger so you can see all right okay. so here I'm going to generate a new interface so ng we're using the angular CLI now g for generate and we want to put this in our models folder and um, i for interface we're generating an interface and we want to call that interface player all right so if i hit enter this should generate the interface for us so if i go back to my app folder in the models folder we have this um, interface right here so we have our interface now we can set up all our properties so let's set the first one to be id and it's a string it's going to hold the id of the player the next one is the first name we'll set it also to a string and the next one we want to set the last name of the player it's also a string the age let's set that to a number the country that's also a string and finally we want to set the position and that's also a string all right so this is our interface for the player next we want to generate a service that will allow us to read the data what we have in our database um, into our angular application so let me quickly bring back the terminal and drag that up so you can see and to generate the service we can do that with ng g for generate s for service we're going to put that into a folder called services and the name of our service is player players player player service we don't want any unit tests so i'm going to do skip tests so this should generate our services so we have player.service.ts i'm going to close this back up bring back this let's head over to our service and then i'm going to close this now so we have our services here and we want to import our database so we need to inject the 
we need to inject the angular fire database and we can do that with db let's make a private variable for that so private db and it's angular angular fire database Now I don't have it here because it needs to be imported at the top so I'm going to do import angular fire angular fire database and we want to import it from at angular Angular Fire database. Okay, that looks good. All right, so we are importing Angular Fire database from Angular slash Fire database, and we have a constructor to in, uh, inject that dependency. And now we want to create a method. Let's call it get all. You can call it whatever you want. And this is going to retrieve all those data that we have in Firebase. And we can do this by typing this dot db dot. Um, we're going to use the list because we have a list of the data in the database. And here we're going to use our interface that we created previously. I'm going to import that. And we want to add the reference to we're going to add a reference to the name of our database, which we called players from the last video. Let me just quickly bring back that up. So here, if you remember in our database here, we called it players. So to get reference uh, to that with Angular Fire, you just need to pass this players to the list. I think we even need a slash at the front, so slash players. All right, so db list dot um, slash players. Okay, and then we want to we want to use uh, you have snapshot changes and you also have value changes. Value changes gets you to data without the ID and snapshot changes gets you the data with the ID. So let's use this one, snapshot changes. Okay, and um, snapshot changes would, would get us um, a variable, let's call it X and X goes to x dot map so this is going to give us um an array or an object rather and we can map the values of that object we get to get back the id so that's why we're doing x dot map and oh, sorry i just missed something in the snapshot changes right here you need to do pipe so we pipe what we get here using our map operator so map and we now can map those values so x which is the value we get x dot Let's quickly import the map. No. You can import map from RxJx. So map from RxJx slash operators. That's where we import the map. And here we want to map whatever we get. Let's see why and we map that to a new object of what we want which would be 
let's say our ID and we're going to call it y dot we have a payload key so you have the payload dot key to get the key of the object coming from firebase and also now that we've gotten the id then we can use the javascript spread operator to append the object that we are getting to the id so you copy the object what we get from firebase to this object that we are creating it has an id and then we copy the other one there and that would be y dot the payload dot the value of the payload yeah so this is what we would get to get all the the data so this is our get all function and let's return this as an observable so that we can subscribe to it in in our component so observable of player let's make it an array player array i'm going to return this Now we have an error and let's return this as player. And we have a problem because the player already has the ID and this should overwrite it. So to fix this, we simply put this here. This might be no so well let's try this again so we get this value as a player and we need the ID, which which we can get from the payload. Okay, I think one fix for this, let's go back and make this optional. Let's make this optional. I'm going to save this. Alright, so to fix this issue, we just need to give a type to the Y here and let's give it the type of any. Right, so what we are doing is that we get this data from Firebase and we want to get the ID from it. So we do a map, uh, use the map operator 
and we're mapping with y i didn't give a data type to y before that's why we had that issue so we um get the payload from y and from the payload we get the key and that key remember is our id and we map that to this id field and we copy all the properties from the payload to the value as player and this id here should override the one that we are getting from player all right so that's how we didn't need a semicolon there that's how we can return all the players from firebase now we have our service let's um use this um, service in our component so right now if we go back to our application we have models we have services um let's do one for the for the component and let's create the component called players component so i'm just going to bring back my terminal it's right there and we're going to generate the new component in g g for generate c for components we're going to put that in our components folder and we're going to call that components player player components to hold all the players and let's keep the test because we're not writing any unit test okay so i'm going to do that hit enter and we have our components folder right there so let me take this out for now we have our services we have our component let's also go to the app the component here and let's remove everything here and leave our router outlet because this would be for our routing it would allow us to route from one page to another page so we leave the routing and next we want to be able to route to to the other page right so right now if we go back to our app we have just the players app so we need to be able to route to our app so we can do that by going to app the routing here we can define our route so to define the route you need an object and you set the path so for the path let's use the default path and we can set it to a component and for our component we'll be using the player component that we just created so this is our player component and now if i let me just do this so i can show you what we have in the browser so in our browser we head over to localhost 2000 you see that um, the default um, route is uh, this players component that we just created so players work so now we want to display those values that we're getting from firebase on this page so let's do that quickly so we define our route for this part and we want to display the data there so let's go to the component our players component and we want to inject our player service that we just created so private let's call it player service and player service okay so we have our player service and on the engine in it so this lifecycle hook is what happens when the page loads for the first time we want to display that data when the page loads for the first time so we're going to say this dot player service dot get all that's the method that we created in our service and we want to subscribe to it and let's get the variable p and let's do p dot let's log p just to be sure we are getting back that data okay that's how we get back the data from our service so i'm going to save that and i'm going to bring back the browser right here so we have the players work 
and now if I inspect the page just going to bring the dev tool here and in the console you see that we have an array and our data is coming back from the the console it's coming back as an array all right so we are getting back the data from firebase that's good the next thing we want to do is we want to display this data on our page so that we can see them right here we are just seeing them now on the console all right so to do that we gonna set up a variable or a field rather and let's call it players so this field would hold all of our players um it's gonna be an array of players i think i named that player and we want to import that okay we have the players and we don't want to log this to the console anymore but instead we want to set this dot players to be equal to p all right so now we have everything we are getting from the console inside this our players variable so the next thing we want to do let me Let's go to the players component or HTML right here. We want to display a table. We want to display the data in a table. So we have a table, table head, table row. And in the table row, we have the table data. The first one was the first name. So first name. Then we have another one for the last name and then another one for age and country and finally the position, right, so position. Okay, and for the body t body of the table we want to do the row and the data for the row we're going to use our ng4 directive and loop through that array of data that we are getting from the database so it's going to be ng4 player you can call it anything you want or player of players right so this would loop through the players array and display the value with uh, what they call interpolation so this would be player dot first name and the next one will be player the last name and the next one I think we have two more so you can do TD multiply by two tab and let's do player dot age player dot country and the final one is player dot position all right and if i save this and i'm just going to bring back the browser and there you see it we have now on our local host we have the data coming back from the database you have the table it's a table um just so you know it's a table you can put the border let's say border one and let me bring it back up now you can see this is a normal ugly html table 
so the table is is there we are storing the data in the table but as we can see the table is ugly and we want to make this look nice and we're going to do that using bootstrap so in the next video we're going to install bootstrap and make our data look nice so see you in the next video